Hi, my name is David Balestri. I am the head of a ministry called Marketplace Invasion. It's a great honour uh, to be with you and to be invited to speak here in uh, or throughout Australia and some of the other subsidiaries. Uh, I just want to say thank you first off to Stefan Horvath, who is the Australian coordinator for this uh, most generous invitation. I count it a great honour to uh, be really engaged in this way with such a uh, pioneering group of people. Uh, I'm a business consultant in the marketplace to both Christian and non-Christian clients, CEOs, uh, organisations, politicians, entrepreneurs. And I can't tell you over the last 15 years that I've been a formal uh, business coach how many times I've encountered great godly men and women in the marketplace that were really impacted and many of them launched through the ministry of the full gospel business. So, um, uh, you know, it just seems like a full circle coming back and engaging in this way. You know, I've got a great passion for the marketplace. My brief testimony is that uh, I started my own business when I was very young. I was a kidpreneur. I was 10 years old and uh, was uh, part of a, a challenged poor family. And um, there wasn't a lot of money at home. And so it just seemed like entrepreneurship was in my DNA from a very young age. And, and rather than just sit at home with no money, I, I cooked up a plan uh, to build a car wash business with some young friends who um, joined me on a Saturday morning. And we would go and knock on the doors of neighbours and um, offer to wash their car for a dollar. It was a little while ago, as you would appreciate. But, you know, I, I remember wor we worked hard as, uh, well, as hard as a 10-year-old and a couple of eight, nine-year-olds could. And uh, we would make, you know, I don't know, we'd wash maybe 10 cars in a morning. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd take that $10. And back then, you know, you could really live like a king for ten dollars, and so we would we would take our our, our earnings and um, go and squander them at the uh, the local uh, the local fish and chip shop, and eat like kings, and drink too much uh, soft drink, and play video games, you know, until the money ran out, and then we would do that again. Uh, did that for a little while, and then my father became involved in um, uh, the food industry. And uh, I joined him at a very young age. I left school when I was 13, 13, 14, to become my father's business partner in a cafe. And it just seemed like from then on, I was always involved in some sort of enterprise, some sort of business. And uh, I remember buying my first business outright uh, when I was 18 years old and uh, just married. You know, around that same time, I also had a life-changing encounter where um, I, I, I came into a revelation of God's love and his plan for my life. I had a praying mother who contended for my salvation in prayer. I had a praying grandmother. I should have just given up. There was no way I was going to um, ever be able to outrun uh, their prayers and the love of God. So at 17, I surrendered my life at the front of a church and uh, haven't looked back since. I'm 48 years old and it's been a great joy to walk with the Lord all of these years. But like you would, well, like you would, you would know that um, I was a, while I was a businessman and I also loved the Lord, I, I loved the church and I loved, I, I felt very at home for, for a long time in the church in the sense that Sunday was, uh, was, a, was a really, you know, uh, I was a spiritual guy. I, I'd fallen deeply in love with Jesus. And so I really looked forward to Sunday. I looked forward to the community of the saints. I looked forward to worship and I looked forward to the word of God being preached. However, as that, you know, as that went on, I remember getting really uh, activated in my heart, a real sense of destiny uh, enveloped me in my early 20s and uh, 
I took this 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 thing, this 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 sense of destiny, and I went and saw my senior pastor, a godly man, um, and asked him about it. And I said, "What what do I do uh, with this great? You know, I mean, I'm I'm in business, I'm in enterprise, I love the church, but I feel like God has a great destiny for me." And you know. Um, when I went and spoke to some godly people around that, back then, really their best advice or their, their nudging of me was that if, if I had a real call of God in my life and a real sense of destiny, that I must somehow, the, the inference was that I must somehow be called to be a pastor of a church. Now, that, that, that kind of confused me, and I, 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 I'm sure that many of the listeners to this, uh, this broadcast are going to understand what I'm about to say, I, I love the Lord and I, I would do anything, anything. I felt like I would, I said, Lord, my life is yours. I will do anything. If you want me to be a missionary in the farthest part of the earth, I'll do that. If you want me to be a church pastor, I'll do that. The thing that confused me though, is I couldn't reconcile that, that God, if you want me to be a pastor of a church, why would you have wired me in this entrepreneurial realm. I mean, I was a businessman. There was no denying that I had those sort of things. And so I, I went on this kind of prayer journey, asking the Lord and uh, praying out to, crying out to God and asking him, God, are you calling me? He, he was the prayer. I said, God, are you calling me into the ministry or are you calling me to be a businessman? You know, wh which one would you want me to do? And whichever one that you confirm, that you want me to do, I'll, I'll be that. And I remember I said to the Lord, if you call me to be a pastor, I'll, I'll walk away from business and I'll go and I'll, and I'll pastor a church and I'll, 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 I'll give my whole heart to that. If, if you want, you know, if you want me to be in the ministry, if you want me to be a, remain a businessman, I said to the Lord, I can, I, I'll, I'll serve you. I'll, I'll serve those um, who are in the ministry. I'll, I'll support them financially. Um, I'll serve in church, you know, like I'll be a great volunteer. So I, I want to say to you that I was just passionate to do whatever God had asked me to do. Well, you know, um, what happened was that, that I, I didn't hear anything from God in prayer about which one of those I was actually supposed to engage with, which confused me because um, I, 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 was, I was accustomed, as it were, to have the Lord speak to me in my in my contemplative prayer time or usually when I was seeking the Lord maybe there would be like a, an illumination of some scriptures or or there would be kind of some conversation with other godly people and something would jump in my heart and there would be a you know a real confirmation but on this point whether I should be in the ministry or whether I should be a businessman it seemed like the Lord was silent so what I did is I I've got to say to you, in my mid-20s, I took a guess, and I guessed that God was calling me to be in the ministry to work in the church. And so I began, I, I, I got in a job uh, working in a church, and I began going to Bible college and began sort of, you know, that, that whole process. The problem was that as I was working for the church, which I was enjoying, and as I was even going to Bible college, I couldn't help but begin to daydream really about the marketplace. And after a little while, I thought, oh, my goodness, I've, <laughs> I've taken a guess here of which one God has called me. And even though I had a 50-50 shot, I think I, I think I've guessed the wrong one. So I, I resigned from my position in the church. I, 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 I pulled out of Bible college and I, I jumped back into, as it were, the marketplace and the entrepreneurship. Well, wouldn't you know, as I'm back now in the marketplace and in enterprise, I begin to start daydreaming about the church. And um, this, this really confused me on the inside. I was like, God, I mean, it's got to be one of the two. And, and now I don't know which one it was. And really, it was at that point, in a point of great frustration and great confusion, that it was like the word of God or the wisdom of God broke through to my heart. And I, I felt the Lord say to me, David, stop separating something that I've never separated. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And I feel like the Lord really said to me, Dave, you're separating the marketplace and ministry. 
you, you, you know, you, you're suggesting that the only people that I recognize that are in ministry are those that somehow work in the church and not those that work in the marketplace. Now, I, I didn't know that I had built a prejudice on the inside of my heart. Um, and, and you know what? It was the environment. I mean, I, I, I take full responsibility for that. But it also was really a part of the environment in which I was raised in. How many times have you heard people ask, oh, are you in full-time ministry? Meaning, do you work for a church? And, uh, you know, or are you in bivocational ministry? And bivocational ministry meaning, you know, you work part-time for a church, but you've also got sort of a part-time job until the church can get big enough or the ministry can get big enough that all of a sudden you can do the ultimate and come across and work full-time in the ministry. But, you know, this is a great tragedy that even, even with some of the most outstanding ministry over the last, really what I would suggest, 70 years in the body of Christ that has tried to challenge the notion that somehow there's, there's just, you know, this small group of people that are in ministry and everybody else is kind of supposed to be just, you know, I don't know, supporting them or, or, or kind of waiting till Jesus comes. I don't know. You know, this, this prejudice and several, several prejudices actually uh, remain dominant and entrenched in the church. And as a result of that, um, I've got to say to you that the, the church and the saints in the marketplace have not yet uh, not not in not in the last uh, couple of generations been as effective as they are called to be. You know, I, I I believe that when you read the book of Acts, you yes, while you do see the apostles at the forefront, what you also see in the book of Acts and then the rest of the epistles is you see a very activated church, not just the leaders, but you see a very activated. Uh, people in the church, and uh, you see them powerfully ma uh, ministering the ministry of Christ in the marketplace and in all the other spheres of society, not just the church. I believe that we're in the midst of a great awakening right across the earth. I believe that this awakening uh, is, is was going on before this pan global pandemic uh, that, that we're in in 2021. Um, I believe that for the last 30 years, really dominantly, um, there's been another wave, you know, the, the full gospel business ministries, as well as some of the other great champions uh, of the uh, champion ministries of the faith. I think of um, uh, uh, um, uh, Youth for Christ. I think of uh, Youth with a Mission. Um, you know, some of these great organizations that really in the early days started to champion um, the, the ministry of the saints, which is probably what I'm, what I'm going to try and unpack over the next um, couple of sessions here. I want to really bring to the forefront and champion uh, the ministry of the saints in business, the ministry of the saints in, in, in companies, in marketplace uh, settings. I believe, as a matter of fact, that God has set up um, the body of Christ in 2021, I believe that we are going to see such a tsunami outpouring of the grace of God with a mighty awakening of ministry done not purely at the, at, at the, at, on a Sunday on a, in a church setting, but actually the ministry of the saints that is going to be outworked in, as it were, the, the pulpits of the city that are not in churches. Now, uh, I want you to hear me here. I am a, a, a businessman, Christian entrepreneur, or a kingdom entrepreneur in the marketplace, and I also carry a heavy responsibility or a large responsibility uh, with regards to the church, as in the congregation. I'm, I'm part of a, a multi-site uh, church here on the Central Coast in Sydney. My senior pastors are Pastors Mark and Darlene Check. Uh, I am the business pastor. I take care of the business families and one of the executive elders of the church. So, so I I love I love the Sunday church. I I preach. I 
I fulfill, I, I, I run a center of excellence within um, our, our local church, the center of excellence actually uh, that we're pioneering here. Um, I run a kingdom entrepreneurs co uh, college uh, or academy, excuse me, out of, out of the, the local church. And it doesn't just service the business people and that are uh, in business or aspirational inside our own local church. It actually serves uh, the region, and uh, I also have um, international students uh, that are part of that course, which is um, a wonderful uh, expression of the church being a real activator and a equipper of the saints. And I believe that in, as we continue to go forward, what we're going to see right across the body of Christ is that churches and uh, church ministries are going to become very uh, attuned on how to equip the believers, the saints, for the effective ministry, for them to be effective ministers in their homes, uh, in their marriages, in their parenting, in their neighbourhoods, um, as they are part of uh, uh, community groups and sports clubs, in their workplaces, uh, as their managers and CEOs and school teachers and baristas and cleaners, and as they are entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, pioneering great business. And I really do believe that the church over the next 10, 20 years is going to go through a renaissance of how it actually equips the saints. No longer will the church ministry training of the saints will simply be trying to coach the saints on how to run a life group or how to run a prayer meeting in their home. Nothing wrong with those things, by the way. Those things are valid. They're important. Um, you know, no longer just about, well, how to serve on a Sunday. I think we should all serve on a Sunday. I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for, you know, serving in the house that you're a part of. I, I have no qualms with that. The thing that I have a qualm with is when there's a suggestion that says if you really want to serve God, then, you know, you need to find your calling uh, in some sort of a Sunday job at church. You know, uh, uh, I stand at the door on a Sunday, uh, on Sunday in church welcoming people, not because it's my destiny, not because it's my ultimate calling. I do that because I'm family. I do that because I love the, the saints of God. I do that because I love the people of God. That's not a calling uh, you're called to to be part of a family. That that's what it's like doing the dishes. I don't I don't I don't say suggest to any of my children that their destiny is to make sure that they clean their rooms and do the dishes every once in a while. That's part of how we do family together. Now, what their calling and destiny is, well, that's a whole nother thing. You know, I actually believe that there are three main prejudices. I call them religious prejudices that block the effective ministry of the saints in the marketplace. Those prejudices, by the way, are not in the world. They are in the church. They're religious prejudices. And uh, now having trained literally thousands of kingdom entrepreneurs and marketplace champions, I can say to you that I found these three prejudices, if you don't break them, if they're not dismantled and reconfigured in your life, no matter how much you want to serve God, no matter how much you want to uh, be effective, you will be diminished as a result of these religious prejudices. So what I'd like to do is take the next uh, three sessions that I'm going to be with you and begin to unpack each one of these prejudices and replace them, I believe, with, with more a, a biblical uh, framework so that you uh, can be equipped, so that you can be released, so that you can really move forward and see the kingdom of God advance uh, through your ministry, through your business, through your enterprise. There's lots to talk about, and I'm only ever going to, in each of these sessions, they're going to be about 20 minutes each. I'm only ever really going to be able to touch the tips of the icebergs, but I pray and hope that as I do that, it's going to provoke you to be like a Berean and go and search these things out for yourself. I have uh, a number of um, just free 
uh, resources, some, some more videos on YouTube. Just You can just Google my name, David Balestri, or Marketplace Invasion. That's my ministry website. I'm, I'm active on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Of course, you can go to my website, marketplaceinvasion.com.au, and you can find a whole bunch of teaching and resource uh, free of charge. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't make my income through that. I, I really see that as um, I just want to equip the body of Christ. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, of course, charging for resource, but I actually, uh, for me, I have professional clients. That's how I'm, I'm funded. Uh, I, I help um, politicians, uh, CEOs all around the world these days um, really uh, move forward and be, be effective ministers in their marketplace callings. And so I'd love to just take a couple of minutes at the end of each video, and I'll do that now, and just pray uh, for you, pray for us as we go on this journey together. So, Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for every marketplace champion watching this video. I thank you for every, every, every church pastor that's also watching this video. I thank you, Lord. You're helping us. You're helping us to come into a context that is going to cause the church of Jesus Christ, your church, to be effective, to be powerful, to be the hands and feet, Lord, of the ministry uh, wherever we are, whether we're a barista, whether we're a doctor, a nurse, whether we're a factory worker, a stay-at-home parent, God, you're equipping us. Whether we're a, a, a youth worker in a church or a, or a pastor in the church, oh, Lord, it's the same anointing. And so, Father, we just thank you right now. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to break down religious shackles, religious biases, God, like the, like the biases that were in my own heart. And help us, I pray, to just kind of break out of that. And, Lord, come into the move of God, the, the outpouring of your spirit, which you set for this time. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that right across the earth, you're releasing kingdom entrepreneurs and, and kingdom marketplace champions. And you're going to place us, Lord, in, in places of great effectiveness, Lord, great effectiveness. And it's going to be for your glory, for your name, and for your honor, so your church can advance mightily in the earth. I thank you, Lord. We thank you as you take us on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. I look forward to connecting with you on our next session.